Oregon, number two against number three in Big Ten football on Saturday night with Ohio State coming to town against Oregon. But, Tom, this is one of those annual fall traditions, the Bill Dellinger Invitational, honoring the legendary Oregon distance coach and Olympic medalist Bill Dellinger and some of the top teams in the region stepping to the line, including number two BYU set for racing here in Springfield, Oregon. And we're underway. And Tom, early on, you talked about it in the preview, BYU on paper, an a la carte menu of options to be dominant here, but Oregon, as they will on the women's side as well, want to hold serve. And this is a course that they know very well and have had success here against some of the top teams in the country. They have, and it's nice that Oregon and BYU have started right next to each other. Saw Elliot Cook up there for Oregon early. All the BYU guys clustered together. The strategy here is going to be somewhat interesting, Paul. And you can see the UCLA Bruins also making a mark early in the race. But you can see that entire BYU group clustered together at Nuttycomb. It was an incredible mass finish for them when they finished 4, 6, 8th, 9th, 17th, and their sixth runner was 21st at Nuttycomb, six of the top 21. Still a lot of racing to come over the course of the next several weeks leading to that NCAA championship in Madison, Wisconsin. We'll be there next week for pre-nationals. They've already had Nuttycomb, so the epicenter of the sport certainly up in Wisconsin this year. Great look from high above this Pine Ridge Golf Club, the host of so many of these Dellingers, with apologies to the uh, the Friday tea times that have been uh, put on the back burner for this race. It is very flat, four loops as we talked about, Tom, so this thing moves along pretty quickly, and, and they just kind of settle in on the pace, and it's a rinse and repeat kind of race. Yeah, and it's 61 degrees out there with a slight cloud cover. You could not ask for better conditions for an 8K race. And as you pointed out, Paul, the net elevation change on this course is eight feet. And so really not much to uh, to worry about in terms of any uh, vicissitudes in the course. And you can see people looking around, the BYU gang all looking around. And they'll be coming up. We should get an intermediary split here very, very soon. Oregon group hanging a little bit further behind. Obviously the pace a little bit slow, Paul, because you wouldn't have this big a group if they were pushing it. But BYU now, one, two, three, and four. When we talk about this event being so much team driven and keeping yourself within contact of your fellow runners is one of those ways you can keep yourself in the game. Again, the first five members of the squad across the line will be placed into their placings and then that score added up together. And of course, with some unattached athletes, that is the chaos that we witness in that in that time right after they reach this one kilometer mark. As they come across that line in just under two minutes and 50 seconds, officially Aiden Troutner, somebody we've been talking about since his prep days BYU senior leading this one officially and then just Quavius Harris of Salt Lake Utah Community College Rob McManus and Marco Perez from Montana State and Cal State Fullerton but look at that group of Cougars from BYU now five across here in the early going and I want to point out Quavius Harris that's not a mistake that he's up there the young man sophomore from Salt Lake Community College Paul he he has a range of 149 from the 800 all the way to 1340 for the 5,000. And he's won three junior college national championships, two indoors at the mile and 3K, actually four, one outdoors at the 5K, and also won that junior college national cross country championship. So that is not at all a mistake. And when you look at the leaderboard here, as you can see, all the BYU guys are up there. It's not reflected quite yet in the uh, sidebar that you see the BYU score is not up there yet and their athletes for some reason not showing up in the data other than Troutner but they're all up there trust me <laughs> we can see them <laughs> they passed the eye test at this point yeah, absolutely a lot of racing left to go again that's the uh, current standings and the overall individual standings that you see there rotating through as they go deeper in the order you see Quincy Norman's name of the University of Oregon there back in 29th position and you know yeah. Oregon taking a, a relatively 
wait and see approach here in the early going. They are. You don't really see any of their guys up there. The BYU guys just continuously look around, and I'm sure our leaderboard will be updated with their positioning. But we have BYU is really fortunate because they've got four seniors in that they haven't seen anything in their careers. Nothing would be new to them. And so their ability, and I think you brought up a really good point, Paul. They want to keep that group together as long as they can in this race. This is not about individual title. This is about a team title. And they are very much clustered together. They go so deep. They go six deep on this team, actually seven deep on this team. And the Oregon runners, we've seen this before at Dellinger. They've laid back in the first loop and then come on strong. I would have thought that I might see a, a Simeon Birnbaum sighting here by now, but uh, he's he's going according to Jerry Schumacher, the head coach at Oregon's race plan. A little uh, fumbling around there on uh, – on that turn, which can happen. It's been relatively dry yes. in Western Oregon for most of the month of October. Cool mornings, but uh, up into the low 60s, mid 70s. Uh, and so conditions here are really good. When we saw those rewind highlights, we've had some pretty messy days on this course as well, but good footing for this BYU squad. You know, BYU, so much success under Ed I. Stone and that ability to leverage the fact that they are training at altitude. That's something that Jerry Schumacher did with his Oregon group this year took them out and into Utah for an extended period of high altitude training. And so a lot of this is about, you know, where you're at in coming off that high altitude training. And you don't necessarily need to be a high performing team at this point. It's kind of where you need to be late November that what matters most. Yeah, this is a litmus test race. It's about, and that's about your eight feet, by the way, and change of elevation on the course. <laughs> uh, this is like a litmus test to see after that kind of training, okay, where is everybody? Do we have some fatigued runners? Do we have runners that are that are uh, in good shape? What do we need to do to fine tune to your point for pre-nationals, for the Big Ten Conference, or for BYU, the Big 12, where they go head to head with the number one team in the country, Oklahoma State. But right now we've got six BYU runners in that top group. And it's <laughs> this is about as impressive a team performance as you are gonna see. And now we see some of the Oregon runners. And there's Birnbaum and the- There's uh, Simeon, yep. See him in the sunglasses. Easy to pick him out in the field. They have actually now gotten those BYU athletes into those team results and BYU with a pretty sizable lead after that first kilometer. And, you know, you look at that group of BYU athletes that are there up in front. We mentioned Troutner. We mentioned Casey Klinger at the top of the show. you got to mention James Corrigan. Oh, he just happens to be an Olympian. Yes, that's in exactly. The, in the squad as well. Lucas Bonds, who ran very well in in uh, Wisconsin at Nuttycomb and Joey Noakes. So all those guys, along with Creed Thompson, making it a very blue-tinted front pack of runners there with the Oregon group, you know, beginning to start to show a few more yep. of those you kits see. in view. And so they're just kind of working their way back in. You see Elliot Cook now, who was seventh here last year. He's on the far left, Birnbaum trailing him a little bit. One guy I did not mention was Bonds because early season he had not looked great. But this is a guy that's a 337-1500 runner and a 753-3,354 miler guy. So Lucas Bonds is absolutely legit and, to your point, makes him very deep. If he is, in fact, on, then they go 7-8 deep now. So a little over eight minutes into this 8,000 meters of championship racing for this 2024 Bill Dellinger Invitational, the event honoring honoring the legendary Oregon distance coach and as a former walk-on sprinter who desperately tried to avoid any time Bill Dellinger said, hey, come out and see if you could run some longer distances. Uh, you know, he had just created such a culture of excellence there over the years and very much front and center in the history of Oregon track and field. Now Oregon part of that Big Ten group. Paul, I want to mention Montana State. They're having a great meet right now. They're currently right up in the top three on the team standings, but they are packing well. Rob McManus in fifth, Ben Perrin in eighth, Will Kelly in 17th, tied with his teammate Harvey Crum. And that's not a mistake. Montana State, I felt, was underrated here, ranked number eighth in the mountain region, but they haven't really thrown their whole group out. And uh, this, is, this is one of those meets where now you say, hey, we're going to throw our guys out here. Let's see what they can do against good competition, and they are responding in kind. And BYU as a team 
with those two aforementioned athletes from Montana State. Eight of the rest of the top 10 places are all made up from BYU as they've got their entire squad there near the front of the pack with Troutner, Klinger, Noakes, Corrigan, both Creed and Davin Thompson, Bonds, and then Berkeley Nance has moved in to 10th position here as they near the halfway mark at Pine Ridge Golf Club. And this is about the time when Oregon's gonna make their move and when they have made their move in the past. We've seen this before from Jerry Schumacher's teams where they really take it on in the latter part of the race. It's interesting to see right now, Cook is 20th, Echo Hawk 25th, Quincy Norman, again, who was second last year, he's 30th. Uh, so these guys have got to start moving here pretty soon. Doran Camp 32nd, Burke 38. And where the heck is Simeon Birnbaum? See Jaquavius Harris of Salt Lake Community College there out on the far right of your screen, still staying in the mix here. But that lead group has started to have a little bit of separation from that chase pack as things begin to decompress even more here as we reach this kind of halfway point of the 8,000 meter race. A look back here to the rest of the field. Maybe a couple of BYU athletes now falling back to the rest of the field and keeping an eye out for some of those top Oregon athletes. A lot of their younger squad not racing in the Oregon singlets today. And that's a choice you can make here, particularly easier when you're in your home state of Oregon is like, I'm not ready to make some commitments to having some of these younger athletes don a kit just yet with a lot of options available here with several weeks to come before championship season in November. Yeah, and we, we, uh, we also have a UCLA runner that is up there in the lead pack. He is not being reflected in our data, but he's been up there all day long. Not exactly sure who that is for those of you that want to know. And, and uh, also a clarity on Lucas Bond's second in the B race at Nutty Comb, and that's why we didn't see him and see what he could do in that A race. Uh, but this is a really fascinating. Usually by this time, Paul, somebody is going to maybe break away, but we still have a whole group here all together, 8.42.9 through 3K. Not entirely bad. That's, uh, you know, around uh, 440 mile pace, but now we're going to have to start to see some separation. Still a group of about six BYU athletes there in front as they have led from the get-go and have run this as a, a pack race training race. Ed Eyestone's group so confident in their ability to come out to a cross-country venue and attack it with the determination that you would expect from a squad that's ranked second in the country and has absolute plans to attack that race course in Wisconsin in late November and try to win BYU a team championship. And, you know, this this is the the sport in the season that I'm sure Ed Eyestone absolutely loves because it is driven by that whole team concept and being able to, you know, tell all these guys you're all equally talented, but we're going to want to try to see how strong we can have you from the very first runner across the line to the fifth runner across the line. Uh Absolutely. And, and, and think about it, Paul. BYU has been third in the NCAA championships the last two years. They won it in 2019. They were second in 2018, third in 2017. The consistency of excellence that iStone has put together with these teams. But I want to say this, Paul, that 2019 won, team won. This team may be every bit as good or better than that 2019 team because it is deep, very, very deep. Getting close to a five-kilometer split here is the near 14 minutes on the clock. Again, 8,000 meters to be covered here. And BYU in total control of this race, though Jacavius Harris is still trying to keep himself in the conversation. But I believe he's now, is he now the only non-BYU athlete in that front group? Well, uh, we actually have... That UCLA athlete in there who is <laughs> He's being surrounded, tucked there on the inside. <laughs> Talk about being boxed in, right? And actually, yep, you had two is. UCLA athletes. So the Bruins, who we did not expect much from candidly, also now in the Big Ten Conference, showing some might here. 
and hopefully uh, we can get their names and uh, positions on the leaderboard here shortly. But Paul, that lead pack looks to be about eight or nine and up there for a long time was Rob McManus of Montana State. He has dropped back a little bit. M M McManus, pardon me, he's an 829.58 steepler and he was 38th at Nuttycomb. So he's a, he's a legit guy. Finally, Michael Morellis is one of those two UCLA athletes on there, but we still can't identify the man that was on the inside. But at least we got Morellis in there. And Harris now up into eighth position, BYU. One, two, three, four, five, and seven here as Corrigan, the Olympian, trailing that pack of five BYU teammates. Harris, you can see it, still just trying to keep himself in the mix here. Less than 3K to go now. The uh, going to make a bold prediction here now. <laughs> it, it does appear like BYU is on its way to winning the team title here at the 2024 Bill Dellinger Invitation. It'll be interesting to see how they play this one out as they'll at some point have to stop thinking about yes team and like who wants to win this thing. Yeah, and, and I think further down that leaderboard, it's very interesting. Montana State right now ahead of Oregon and Oregon actually battling with Gonzaga for third. I'm not sure I would have expected this because uh, Jerry Schumacher's got his guys out there. You know, all of his best guys are, are running here and a uh, little bit surprised they're not higher up in the leaderboard. But again, coming from altitude, this is probably really more of a litmus test training run for them. Uh, but a bit, nevertheless, a bit of surprising. So the top three Oregon's folks back in 16th, 18th, and 19th position, Elliot Cook, Birnbaum, and Echo Hawk. What I do note there is all of them have moved up in mm -hmm. positioning here. So we're seeing the Oregon strategy a right. bit more. Let's let's send our guys towards the end of this and try to catch up to these guys. But look at this difference in the leaders and that group that is chasing them. And I think we actually may even saw a look at a couple of the Oregon athletes there in the back trying to, again, pick off one by one those folks that are beginning to fall off the back. Harris. Harris oh, still in there. Three, he's uh, in eighth. You can see him. He's got his head down. He's really driving with those arms. And boy, which one of these BYU guys is actually going to win this race? That's the real question. Because as you so astutely pointed out, the team title is no longer in question everybody kind of looking around so which one of these guys is going to get separation and then the other big question is can that oregon trio of cook Birnbaum, and echo hawk start to make their move up through this leader pack and doran camp and norman not that far behind remember norman was second here last year and evan burke the transfer from stanford also starting to move up on that leaderboard Harris doing everything he can to try to stay in contact with this lead group. That's Casey Klinger in the first set of sunglasses here, trying to drive his way forward. As Tom mentioned earlier on, as we look now from high above, very familiar with this course, and he's seen it for many years. The first time coming here back in 2017. Well, and, and Klinger actually... We, you know, Masters athletes are 25 and older. <laughs> Casey Klinger's 26. He could be a Masters athlete competing in, <laughs> at the moment. But he would certainly be the favorite to break away from this group. Fourth at Nutty Comb, 13-17 man, 338-1500 meter runner. So he has wheels. And by the way, at the NCAAs in 2020, he was 13th. That's the one that was in March of, or of 21, 13th and then 8th and 21 and 7th and 22. So this is a young man that has a shot, a real shot at finishing top five in the NCAAs. And he would be the guy that you would think would pull away and win this thing. But he's got just a terrific group of teammates, any of whom on, the, on a given day could win this thing. Now a group of six men here in front as they reach the 19 minute mark on this race clock as they'll race to 8,000 meters. We'll get one more reset of the field and the team standings at 7,000 meters. As you see in the left hand corner of your screen, the athletic course tracker that gives you a sense of where they are out on the course, making this long sweep back towards the north end of this golf course. 
in kind of the final stage of the race. They're actually going alongside now and adjacent to what will be that finish line shoot for them. That will be coming into play in just a few minutes. But BYU in total control of this team race. Need five across the line, and you see five BYU Cougar singlets. One, two, three, four, and five. And beginning now, Tom, to pull away. Yeah, uh, but still a great job done by Michael Morellis of UCLA in six. He's not that far behind. And Harris still hanging in there in seventh. I mean, Morellis, this is a breakthrough performance for him. Who would have expected that? I mean, a, a, a pretty good runner, no doubt about it, but this is an absolute breakthrough. And then what we really want to see is how much the Ducks have moved up because that second place team battle is still very much in play. So it's still Troutner and Klinger and Corrigan, Creed Thompson and Joey Noakes. That's the group of five here at the front. Morellis, as Tom mentioned, the UCLA runner there in six, but falling a little bit behind now. And that gives Jahavius Harris somebody to key in on as the Salt Lake City Community College athlete back in seventh position. Elliot Cook has now moved up another four spots in the order. He's into 12th, but Oregon's group really not being able to make much of a dent here and now really just in a battle with the rest of the teams for placing behind BYU that is beginning now to push a little bit harder and Klinger now Klinger. to the lead. Yeah, Klinger, and you've got to really like, um, you know, Corrigan is running very well as well up there. And let, let's <laughs> Corrigan is one of the most amazing stories in U.S. track and field. I mean, he, he finished ninth at the NCAAs in the steeplechase, then improved his PR eight seconds at the USATF meet, and then not, and then seven days later, improved his PR another eight seconds to get to 813 in the steeple. All the attention went to, you know, his teammate that won the silver medal at the Olympic Games in the steeple, Kenny Rooks, but this young man, Corrigan, can run. And uh, Klinger's doing everything he can to pull away, but it's not proving easy at this point. Well, under the tutelage of a uh, legendary runner in his own right, now legendary coach Ed Eyestone coming here to Oregon in an event that honors a legendary runner and legendary coach Bill Dellinger. I'm sure these BYU Cougars have a sense of the tradition and history here, and they're going to have some history made here as they're going to have, it looks as though, a good chance of sweeping the top five places here. But now the battle at the front with Klinger, Trout. Troutner and Corrigan. Troutner's hanging in really, really good. He's another guy who's got some wheels. He's a 359 miler. He was ninth at Nuttycomb. This is going to be a really interesting battle here down the, the stretch. Klinger really moving with those arms, driving with those arms. And Corrigan still looks pretty comfortable on the rail. Yeah, as they make that turn, Klinger's got to keep that line and keep hold of things. Now he looks down, starting to drive, trying to feel the pressure from behind, and look at that beautiful view of B.Y. Cougar singlets as they're gonna come to the line, led by Klinger, Corrigan, and Troutner. B.Y.U. one, two, three, four, and five at the Dellinger invite. And Michael Morellis coming in at six. B.Y.U. is gonna get seven. Jaquavius Harris is gonna get eight. And now it's a, it's a real, Look back, BYU's gonna get 10th to see what we've got from Oregon here. And it looks like Elliot Cook now coming in. Yeah, Cook the first duck across the line. As we saw uh, Gonzaga get its first runner across the line, well, Montana Reed, State uh, now with through. And here battle. comes the rest of the field as the battle will now come into view for that team race. But I, you can't score it any better than what BYU just accomplished here. They'll have a perfect score on a near perfect day in winning the team invitational at Bill Dellinger. Paul, I think Montana State's going to get second. They got a lot of guys through the tremendous job by that program. Just simply superb. They got three or four guys there in the top 15-16. Uh, Morellis finishing sixth. Joey Noakes, by the way, fifth. Will Smith moved up a lot from Gonzaga. He got in there into ninth place. He really moved through the, the field. Thompson, 10th. Elliott Cook ends up 11th. That was Oregon number one. We should start seeing some of those Montana State athletes. Ben Perrin in 12th. 
I know McManus was up there and Taylor was up there as well. We'll keep the camera firmly on the finish line here as we watch the rest of the crew come in. 100 plus runners out on the course covering this 8K distance, a little shorter than that championship distance of 10,000 meters, but that's the common thread that we see in some of these early season races. And BYU turning it into basically a training run here, Tom. Just impressive, <laughs> impressive performance by their squad here in 2024. And seven of the top 10 BYU, Paul. Seven of the top 10. Now, Mon getting back to Montana State for a second here, 12th, 13th, and 16th. Oregon with Cook and Taysen Echohawk, 11th and 14th. And Taysen Echohawk of Frosh, he was second in the 23 Brooks P PR mile. Won the Utah State High School 800, 1600, 3200 championships. So he's a legit runner. Jerry Schumacher's got to be happy with his performance. Birnbaum finishes 22nd, a bit disappointing after he finished third here last year. I think the one thing we've learned in these last several seasons and, and things now changing dramatically with the, uh, the way in which the teams are earning points and how they qualify for uh, national championships. We'll talk about that in a moment, but first, let's check in at the finish line with our winner. Thanks, Paul. And obviously, you know, seven years ago, this young man right here finished fourth in this race. Well, seven years later, you are now the champion of the Bill Dellinger Invitational. Just talk about the emotions and just coming back here seven years later and at now as a senior. Yeah, it's definitely a full circle kind of thing. This is the first race I ever did as a freshman, like traveling. So um, it's really it's been fun to come back my last year and join some good company of Dellinger champions. We have Connor Mans, Clayton Young, Josh Rutinski, all uh, national champions. So yeah, I feel honored to be part of that Dellinger champion club and uh, super stoked for the team. We went one through five today. Um, and yeah, we're really excited and hungry to continue racing this yeah. season. Yeah, first perfect score in this meet since 2015. The Oregon men did it with Edward Cheserak leading the race. Like, what does that really just say about the depth of this group? We saw it at Nutty Comb, and now we're seeing it really big here today with that perfect 15. Yeah, before the race, we were all talking that, you know, any of our top five, top seven could win this race. And so we just went into it with a competitive attitude, and um, we had a goal to just pack it up and um, try, to, try to sweep it. And, um, we had some really good competition here, but yeah, super stoked to come in and get a perfect score. It's always really fun. Yeah. On paper, you guys are number two in the country, but now we're going to see a really good test at Big 12 championships against you guys in number one, Oklahoma State. What's the message you want to send from, from this meet to that meet for the, for the Cowboys to watch out for? Oh, I mean, we, we love racing OSU. They're, they're a great uh, team and we really respect them and, uh, we, we, we admire their uh, competitiveness and how we, we've both kind of lifted, elevated the competition in CAA. So I think for us, we're just going to take this as a confidence booster and um, we're going to keep a humble and hungry attitude moving on these next few weeks into championship season. Casey Klinger with the sweep today for BYU men, one through five, 15 points. Big 12 championships next for them. Congratulations, you guys, and the BYU Cougars. Thank you. Thanks very much, Keenan, as we uh, await the final last last runners across the line here. And it would appear unofficially right now, Tom, Oregon does get low enough sticks to get themselves onto the podium as the second place team behind that sweep as uh, as Casey you know reflecting on the history of who's won here also reflect of the history of how rare a sweep is at an event like Dellinger last done about a decade ago with a pretty good squad led by uh, one Edward Cheserek. Yeah, and I, I want to say that battle for second. Wow, that really came down to the last few meters of this race. So close, two points separating second from fourth. I really thought that Klinger, by the way, what a class act. Just a, reciting all the former BYU runners that won this meet in the past and a very articulate young man, a real credit to BYU. Well, he's had seven years to perfect his uh, <laughs> post-race interview here. As he mentioned, his first race as a freshman yeah. was on this race course there out in front with the shades, looking around, making sure that he's in contact with his other squad members. And then as it began to get to the tail end of the race, the uh, team race decided it was now Casey Klinger's opportunity to take home 
His last appearance yes. at Bill Dellinger in fitting fashion, seven years removed from that first race as a frosh, he finishes as a Bill Dellinger Invitational Champion. But one thing I, I really take from this race, Paul, is James Corrigan. Now, this is a guy that made the Olympic team in the steeplechase. Now, this is an 8K course. That's a 3,000-meter race. And for Corrigan to do as well as he did, and he didn't look like... It looked like he may not have run as hard as he could to win this race. He was really, really impressive. I came away so impressed with this young man. Always impressive, too. The supporters out here at the Pine Ridge Golf Club supporting each of those athletes, whether they're first or last across the line on a beautiful and very busy weekend in the Willamette Valley, Oregon hosting five or six major events in collegiate athletics, most notably the big tilt with Ohio State in football at Otson Stadium, that happening tomorrow night. A reminder, there's a lot more action coming your way on runnerspace.com, including some events that will be simulcast on Big Ten Plus, like the one we were watching today here, the Bill Dellinger Invitational. Next week, we'll be back in Wisconsin for pre-nets, and we'll have that for you on both platforms, and then on into the month of November. One of the great events, also a great event weekend, being in New York City. Tom and I will both be there as we look forward to covering the U.S. ATF 5K Championships as part of New York City Marathon Weekend. Much more to come here. The women getting ready to race themselves over six kilometers for a Bill Dellinger Invitational Championship, having just witnessed BYU go one, two, three, four, five. Simple math, simple victory for the Cougars of BYU.